This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're recapping another undefeated week for the Bates basketball programs. The women are 7-1, and one, and the men are 5-3, and three, headed into the break. Plus, men's lacrosse head coach Peter Lasagna earned the 2021 Lifetime Service Award last week from the Intercollegiate Men's Lacrosse Coaches Association. That's coming up on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs> The Bates women's basketball team is 7-1 on the year and ranked 22nd in the country in the D3Hoops.com Top 25 poll. Bates won at Husson Monday night by a final score of 65-48 as junior captain Megan Graff poured in a game-high 22 points to lead the way. And she is our female Bobcat of the Week. I think it's just we're a team that, like any any five who's out on the court, like we're all just capable of being offensive and defensive threats. Like whatever five rotation um, or lineup is out there, it's just like we kind of have trust in everyone that depending on the situation, like what we need, if we need like someone to score or we can like really look to any five to do that and if it's like if we need to get a stop defensively it's like there's no there's just not any like gaps or like weaknesses we have this five in if we want to put another five in it's just like it's the same like level um and like balance that everyone can con- contribute at any given time and whoever is on the court Excellent. Well, take us through that Bowdoin win a few weeks back. I mean, that was big, obviously, on the road. They were fouling you a lot in the fourth quarter. You converted your free throws <laughs> at a big yeah. game. Take us through that win and what it meant for you and, and for the team. Yeah, it was um, just, like, such an amazing feeling. I think, obviously, like, we've just been, like, building so much these past few years. And, I mean, I think playing against a team like Bowdoin, who has the reputation that they do, and it was like, all right, like, yeah, we've been beating these teams, but like, this is like our first like big test for us. It's our, we can get like, we can, it's our first experience to un- see what like an in-conference game is like, what um, conference opponent opponents are like. And on top of that, it's just like, we, we've always been wanting to beat Bowdoin and it was just like literally one of the best feelings ever and all throughout the game. It was just like we knew how important it was to us. And we also knew like what we had to do in order to um, win the game. And I think like everyone just stepped up and um, yeah, it was really, really cool. It, it, there's a point in the fourth quarter where it was, there's so many fouls and like the last like two minutes literally felt like a lifetime. And there was like, I think like 30 seconds left and I still knew we were, we were going to have like, so much of the game like it was I still knew like it was just gonna be like a lot more whistles and stuff but I was like oh my god can this can this game just be over with right now like 30 seconds left we're up I think we were up like eight or ten at this point I know the final score was a little different because they had two threes at the end um but it did I'm not gonna lie and the last 30 seconds felt like a lifetime Take us through your year away, right? You took a year away from Bates. And I know the last time we talked, you were in the midst of coaching a little bit. How, yeah. How'd that experience go? Um, coaching was really cool, actually. Um, it was just another way to, like, stay involved with basketball, um, kind of from, like, a different perspective. I've always been, like, a, um, somewhat interested in coaching. So I figured, like, if I'm taking this year off, why not try and get as much, like, experience I can get I was working an internship too but um coaching was just it was a lot of fun I did I worked with like a few different um ages like I I start my first team I had was seventh graders and then I was like oh maybe let's do like go a little bit older um so then I did I worked with like high schoolers from like sophomores to juniors and that was like a really really cool group um And it was just like a great experience. I think coaching like really, it can like in a way make you a better basketball player in terms of just like, oh, like I'm not the one like playing basketball now. I'm I'm, like the one who has to like, um, like assist a team and be able to like say things in a certain way that like makes sense to them and have to be able to like show them and like recognize like what they need to work on and coach them on that. So it was 
definitely just another way to stay involved with basketball and um, probably just like touch up on the old, the fundamentals that you tend to forget about in college sometimes. Do you gain like a further appreciation of what Allison Montgomery has to do as like the head coach of the Bobcats? Oh yeah. <laughs> the uttermost respect to her for it is it is definitely a challenge coaching a team I get like how you can just get so emotionally invested in it especially because like she was a basketball player she played college basketball and there's like I had to catch myself at points when like I was coaching now it's just like put me on the floor right now like let me play so I can show these girls what I'm talking about so I it is it is hard um it's difficult to just like you're like the like true leader on the team, they're always looking at you. So um, yeah, so much respect to her, but she does such an amazing job coaching our team. Um, and we're just really lucky to have all our coaches um, in our program. Let's talk about the Monday night victory there over Huston at Bangor. You were down a few players, some very key players yeah. this game. So mm -hmm. what was the adjustment like uh, on there on Monday? And obviously um, first half they had to leave, but then, you and Bree took over there in the second yeah. half. Yeah, it was definitely like we could say just like kind of our biggest challenge so far because we um, were missing one of our starters. Like Ari just brings so much to the floor when she's out there. And even in these past practices where we haven't had her, it's just been obvious that there's just been like a missing piece Um to our team because she just brings so much. And then Morgan too is obviously like, just such a good scorer like it's just not it's not easy when you have like two huge contributors on the team um not here for like a, 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 a game against a really good team but we kind of just talked about it in a way where it was like this is a moment of adversity um this is a challenge but um like we've always talked about having a deep bench like let's just like prove to ourselves that like us for saying for so long like we have this deep bench like yeah we do have this deep bench and it was obvious yesterday too like so many people stepped up um came into the floor everyone had like had some really big moments I mean Davina had a bunch of key shots Allison had those two um threes to just give us a lot of momentum um and like everyone who came in I mean Kayla just took on um the starting role and filled in for Ari and like it was just it's nice to be able to be like okay like even though it sucks that these people are injured right now like we do have like the talent and the players to fill the role when injuries happen. What are your thoughts on being ranked 22nd in the country right now, I guess? <laughs> oh, it's really cool. Um, like really cool, but we have to keep it in perspective that a, a number is a number and <laughs> <laughs> there's bigger things that we have to prepare for, but you know, it, it's just like these like mini like milestones and like achievements along like the way of trying to achieve the bigger goal. Um, it's just like a nice um, acknowledgement to us that like, okay, like we are like really going, moving forward. Like as this season has progressed, we just like keep moving forward, getting better as a team and just like ultimately trying to reach like our big goal in, which is like winning our conference and going into the NCAAs. Megan Graff, thank you so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Congrats on a great start to the season. Thank you. The Bates men's basketball team went 2-0 last week, defeating rival Bowdoin in a non-conference game by a count of 80-74 to on Saturday. Then they won a thriller at Husson on Monday, prevailing 82-80 to over the Eagles. First year Drew Sachs helped carry the Bobcats to victory with a game high 23 points. He made six three-pointers on the night, including five in the second half. This came on the heels of Sachs tallying 10 points on four or five shooting in the win over the Polar Bears. And Drew Sachs is our male Bobcat of the week. So I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I got recruited to play prep school at the Governor's Academy in Massachusetts, which just led me to uh, see all of the New England schools. And, you know, I was just interested in a lot of NESCAC schools, UAA schools in New England. And... Uh, started talking to Coach Furbush, really liked everything he was saying, really liked the program. So that led me to choosing Bates. And um, when you were looking at Bates, um, you mentioned Coach Furbush. What about the program really stood out to you? Honestly, it was it was really started with the coaches because COVID had messed up a lot of stuff. I wasn't able to really do a, an official visit, meet all the guys. Uh, but, you know, through doing Zooms, uh, coming to campus with my family and checking things out, um, and just talking a lot with the coaches really uh, made me interested and wanted to come. 
Terrific. And then, okay, so this past week, a lot of fun for the Bobcats. Got a win over Bowden. That was a battle. You had 10 points in that game. And then the Huston game, second half, you, you were lights out. Take us through what was working for you. Yeah, I mean, we just, we, we stuck, stuck to our game plan. Uh, you know, we have a lot of guys that can drive, get to the basket hard. And, you know, they do a great job at, at kicking the ball as well. You can see from the stat sheet, Steph had 10 assists. Jameer had four. You know, we had a lot of assists. So guys were able to, you know, penetrate and kick and look out. And I was just in the right spots at the right time and was able to knock down shots. And obviously you take pride in your shooting ability. How, how do you develop that growing up? Yeah, I mean, I was, everyone's always trusted me as a shooter. And, you know, this team, uh, everyone's put a lot of faith in me. So it's built up my confidence. And, you know, whenever I get an open look, I'm always looking to shoot it. And uh, against Hudson, I got a lot of those. Yeah, I mean, late in the game, I know you, every chance you got, you, you were firing a shot up. I, you, you were able to drive into the paint also and get a key bucket on a two-pointer. How did you make that decision instead of firing it from outside? <laughs> Well, you know, I was pretty hot from three, so they were stepping out, and I was, it opened up a lot of uh, mid-range being able to drive. What's this group like? I mean, you mentioned Primer. He's another first year. He's a walk-on, actually. Uh, what's it been like having, you know, a guy like him in your class? Yeah, it's been, it's been great. Super high energy, tough player. Uh, you know, all the, all the other guys, too, as well. It's just everyone's been connecting really well. Um, yeah, but, yeah, Jameer's been playing great. Yeah, so I was going to say, as a first year, you got to um, – kind of witness the alumni gym atmosphere against Colby and Bowden for the first time with fans in the stands. Take us through that environment in those games. It was awesome. You know, having all the other teams support us, you know, we were able to go to some football games in the fall and some other team sports and uh, seeing them uh, support us as well. is just, it's, it's a great culture we have here. And it was uh, really fun to play in front of a huge crowd. Certainly. And then the win over Bowden, um, Steph had a big game. I mean, you're a guard just like he is. What makes him so good in your opinion? <laughs> He's just he, he's he's he knows the game so well. He's super smart. He's able to to read the defenders, uh, just get correct spacing all the time, and you know just get to his spots. And he practices a ton, practices so many shots, and uh, he's able to get those in games and just knock them down at a high level. You guys are five and three right now. You've got a bit of a break coming up, but I know you practice today. What are some points of emphasis leading into the holiday tournament you have coming up uh, around the new year? Um, so I mean today we're just really emphasis on defense, um, you know, being able to guard the, guard the ball, get rebounds, um, and just being able to stop teams. You know, our, our offense, as we saw yesterday, worked very well, you know, just flowing, pushing the ball. And, um, yeah, it was, it was nice getting that win over Husson and uh, Bowden heading into the break. And uh, we'll be ready in around two weeks to get back to it. Yeah, Husson, obviously a tough team. It was a battle down the stretch. What was your point of view on the final play where Omar got that block? <laughs> yeah, that was that was a crazy play. Um, you know, they they somehow got a good bounce, got the rebound. But, yeah, it was a terrific block by Omar. I, I was right there looking at it. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't really do much. There's some big guys down there. But, thankfully, Omar came out of nowhere and got a great block to end it. Growing up, when did you start playing basketball? A young age, I assume? Yeah, super young age. I mean, I, I don't think I can think of a specific age, but yeah, as, as, as long as I can remember, I've been playing basketball and all other sports as well. At what point did you start to think I could play this in college? Yeah, I mean, throughout middle school, playing AAU, uh, having super like supportive coaches, uh, training me all the time, getting me better. That uh, around then and going into high school is when, you know, I really thought that if I, if I work hard with this, then I can get to higher levels. Growing up in a college town like Ann Arbor, you go to a lot of Michigan games? Yeah, love it. Love Michigan games. Football, <laughs> basketball, season tickets. Season tickets? Okay, so you, what were some Michigan players who maybe inspired you growing up from a basketball perspective? Uh, I really love the 2013 National Championship runner-up team, Trey Burke. Love Nick Stauskas. I try to model my game after him. Other guys, Stu Douglas. Other, other players like that, all, all great Michigan legends. Well, then also what? I think Duncan Robinson started his career in the NESCAC before going to Michigan, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, actually, I actually went to the same high school, Governor's Academy, as him. Uh, and then I, I've also uh, met him back in the day as well uh, through being from Michigan. And uh, so, yeah, him as well. Nice. And then, well, any other thoughts you wanted to share about the season so far and your adjustment to college, I guess, that we haven't got to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've loved it. Love being at Bates so far. We've, I think we've come a long way since the fall and we're still getting even better. And that's just what I'm looking forward to, too. I think we have such high potential, so many players that can uh, provide for the team. And I think, I think we can really go places with this roster. Sounds good. Drew Sachs, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate thanks it. Thanks so much. 
Men's Lacrosse head coach Peter Lasagna received the 2021 Lifetime Service Award from the Intercollegiate Men's Lacrosse Coaches Association on Friday at the IMLCA's annual Winter Summit. First awarded in 2006, the IMLCA Lifetime Service Award honors those people in the coaching profession who have contributed to the overall growth and development of the sport of men's lacrosse in the United States throughout the duration of their career and beyond. Happy to have Bates men's lacrosse head coach Peter Lasagna with us here on the Bobcast. And uh, a tweet came over the wires, if you will, over the weekend announcing you as the winner of the Lifetime Service Award from the IMLCA, which is the Intercollegiate Men's Lacrosse Coaches Association. You were just at their winter summit in Orlando. Talk about this experience, Peter. What was it like for you down there? Overwhelming. I, I mean, in, in terms of the award part, the whole experience was great. Um, us finally doing what the IWLCA, the Intercollegiate Women's Lacrosse Coaches Association, uh, was smart enough to figure out, I don't know how many years ago, but a really long time ago, that, wow, we have every college lacrosse coach in the country and hundreds of high school lacrosse coaches at our convention. Why don't we do a recruiting event? So the women have been doing this for a really, really long time. And some of us have been observing for all of those years uh, hey, wouldn't it be smart for us to combine those things? So um, we finally, we got serious talking about it uh, right as COVID was about to happen. Um, so we finally did it and it was really fun. And the weather was ridiculous, probably too hot maybe to, to watch or play lacrosse, which is funny in December uh, in America. But um, the, whole, the, whole, the whole week uh, was, I thought it went really well. And so as a member of the current, currently member of the IMLCA events committee and the board, uh, it was gratifying to see it work, and it was safe um, for, as a 63-year-old, that was one of the things that I was uh, thinking about, as we brought lacrosse players and their families from all over the country um, to Florida. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, it was all, it was fantastic. And, and get, obviously getting, getting news of this award, which, which happened days before I got on the plane, uh, was just, it was, it was overwhelming. Yeah, what was your reaction when you got the phone call saying you're going to win the award? I was really surprised. Um, I, you know, I, I figured when I knew who it was who had called me and asked me if I was available to speak, uh, Jim Murphy, the Bentley coach, the only Bentley coach um, who's been there for 30 something years. And, it, and it, somebody obviously I've known in New England lacrosse for a long, long, long time. Um, but I know his role as the, as the head of the awards committee. So um, I figured it was either to ask me at the last minute if I would MC the event, which I've done and been asked to do a number of times in the past. And man, was I happy when that wasn't the reason, because it's, it's, it's good for people to hear another voice besides mine. Uh, and then when he just, he, he, he played it very well. He said, uh, Peter, you're, you're, you're planning. I was already registered. You're planning to go to the awards uh, breakfast. Yes, Jim, I am. I said, okay. Um, Cause you're going to get an award. And then a few minutes later, he told me what the award was. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, really humbling and uh, to be honored by your peers. I, I know it sounds like such a cliched and corny thing, but it turns out standing up there in the front of that room, it's an incredibly meaningful thing. And, um, and again, I, I, I feel young. I, I don't, I feel like this is a, a, an older man's award or an exit ramp or something like that. And <laughs> I don't feel like I'm either old or ready for an exit ramp. Um, but it's an, you know, it also gives you an opportunity to look back and go, wow, I, you know, I've been doing a lot of this uh, service. I, I never looked at it as service. I guess that's part of it, Aaron. It's just, it's what I do. It's who I am. It's what, you know, so part of, part of my remarks was to you young guys in the room, I'm getting this award because I said yes, every time somebody asked me to do something. So, <laughs> well, of, of, of all the things you've done, if you can boil it down and maybe a couple things throughout your career that you're most proud of in terms of you helping kind of grow the sport of lacrosse. In the, the days between when Jim Murphy called me and, and, and going down there and preparing to think about, A, can I actually give five minutes of remarks, which in my brain is sort of like the longest you can go on this thing, because there are a lot of people speaking and lacrosse coaches like to talk. Um, but I tried to do that. I tried to focus. And I think in terms of service, aside from being MC of, of virtually every single thing that every organized event that men's lacrosse coaches have ever done, um, I've done that a number of times um, in, in sort of every capacity, the Hall of Fame, the convention itself, uh, all of these award um, things. Uh, but one of the things that I, I think is that I'm most proud of, um, and this is also a really good advertisement, and if I would have had more time, I would have squeezed this into my, the end of my remarks to really try to motivate the younger coaches in the room, but I had to edit, so I edited this, and that was 
say yes. Like just when somebody asks you to, to do something, whether it's being on, on any committee related to lacrosse, um, just say yes. Like it's it's really important for there to be a lot of different participants and for it not to be the same, you know, handful of people making every decision about our sport forever, which is when I was a young guy in the audience, that's what I felt like. Like I looked up and went, wow, those guys are the guys that are on that other committee that we just heard a report from. And so, uh, and I, and I, you know, I was for, I played for and, and was first mentored by Dom Stargia. And a big part of what Dom Stargia said to anybody that worked with him was, you know, you need to get involved in, in serving. Uh, you need to give back to the game. Um, and you need to get your voice in the room, whoever you are, you, you need to get your voice in the room. So because of Dom's pushing, uh, I, and this was the part that I edited out of, out of my talk was say yes, but also don't be worried about doing a good job because I am living proof as somebody who was first at, and this was right in the transition from Brown. No, I must have started when I was at Brown, definitely started when I was the head coach at Brown, but I went from being the secretary of the U.S. Lacrosse, U, yeah, U.S. Lacrosse Men's Division Coaches Council. So that's all levels of of men, uh, men, you know, co collegiate and high school lacrosse, uh, and even college club. And so you get in as the secretary. Aaron, I'm not trying to be stupidly self-effacing. I was awful at being the secretary. I was terrible. And therefore, I got promoted to being the, the second vice president, and then the first vice president, and then the president. So I was the president from 2002 to 2004. And there was some really hot, important stuff going on at that time within men's lacrosse coaching. And one of the things was US lacrosse wanted us to merge our convention with the women. And as you might imagine, there were some men's lacrosse coaches that thought that was a really interesting and intriguing and, and great and productive and beneficial idea and others who had different ideas about that. And so I was the president that, you know, oversaw the board that made the vote in the end to agree to do what U.S. lacrosse wanted us to do. And so, I, again, that's something to, to really long answer to your question, but that's something that I'm really proud of. And, I, and honestly, I think besides having the opportunity to, to, to coach and, and hopefully at least a little bit impact the, the growth of young men, um, starting at really, really young ages, because I've been coaching, you know, very young lacrosse players up through college lacrosse players for almost 40 years. Um, it's having a coaching tree. You know, it, it's at least having a positive enough, positive enough impact on a few people that have played for me that they decided that what they wanted to do with their lives was uh, was coach lacrosse and, and help other young boys and men uh, grow through this sport. Um, and not just through this sport, but with this sport as a vehicle. So I would say those are probably the places where I would start. This organization in particular, the IMLCA, has been around since 2004. Um, how have you seen it grown, grow through the years? Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, again, I, I think when you're a young guy in the audience and you, you know, used to hear all these different monikers and, and, and alphabets thrown out, you really didn't know what was what. And even now, quite honestly, I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about this at the Division One, Division Two, and Division Three level in our breakout meetings um, and in our join meetings, which was to help people understand what the difference is between the IMLCA, which is a coaches organization, and the USILA, which is an institutional organization. So when I first got into college coaching, there was the USLCA, United States Lacrosse Coaches Association, which again was, was, was college and high school and, and college club and actually post-collegiate club. So the IMLCA really came about as an effort to sort of reclaim what used to be the USLCA. So again, there was this heated effort to try to all everybody merge under the umbrella of US lacrosse. And there were some college lacrosse coaches uh, that rebelled against that um, and saw some positives, but also really thought that the best way for us to help ourselves, and especially advocating to the NCAA for things like rule changes and, you know, squad sizes in the NCAA tournament and things that were very specific to college men's lacrosse. And again, I think there's some merit to this argument that, that we had a louder voice if we were separated from U.S. lacrosse. Um, and, and so... That was when guys, uh, and I was involved in the founding of the IMLCA uh, as well with a, with a pretty small group of people.
So that was those are sort of the people that that were on the the IML the U.S. Lacrosse Men's uh, Men's Division Coaches Council. Those were the people that really were inside the room that were most involved in the conversation to decide let's rewrite history uh, forward and uh, and found the IMLCA. This year was the first year though instead of just a coaches like convention if you will you also mixed in a chance to see some recruits is that correct yeah and again as i said earlier we've been right. talking about do doing this for a long time but this is the first time that we actually uh got it done and so um two people mara gallagher and uh who works with uh, empire sports and jl Reppert, who is the uh head coach head coach at holy cross but started being sort of the convention organizer when he was an assistant um at at a couple different places and maybe again, and you know, if JL is not careful, he will be asked to do this job for the rest of his life because he's really, really good at it. I don't, I don't know when he's allowed to say, "Hey guys, could I please let somebody else do this?" Like I have another full time job. But anyway, uh, those people, uh, the members of the events committee, I'm LCA events committee, which which I'm a member of, um, and then the board. We've been talking about this specifically, getting ready for this for a couple of years. As I said, pre pre COVID. Um, and then COVID happened and actually we, we couldn't do it. And, and we talked for a while about, should we aim for 2022? Because we didn't know what 2021 would look like. Um, and people just decided with vaccinations and, and things moving forward that uh, it, it felt like it was safe. And we talked to our medical people and our lawyers. Um, it felt safe to, to plan it for 2021. So yeah, we just did it. Uh, and it was really fun. And now I have 10 emails that I have to respond to after we talk. Uh, because of all the committee work about after action um, and find out what coaches think we did. We're going to pull the coaches, find out what they think we did well and, and what we need to improve. Any other thoughts you want to share about what this award uh, means to you? I will say to you what I said to the audience the other morning, Friday morning, which was, again, while I don't feel old and, and I'm certainly not close to being done or feeling like I'm, I'm done, um, it does give an opportunity to go, wow, I've been doing this for a really long time. Like I've been doing this for a long time. I, I started to do it while I was still a college student, right. you know? So um, it, does, it does give you an opportunity to look back, to think about all the amazing relationships that I have because I decided to do this. Um, and I've been surrounded by extraordinary and exceptional people, um, players and coaches. And, and I've learned from so many people and I, and I found a way, I hope to integrate all the other things that I'm interested in, in my life uh, through lacrosse. And so, I, I, you know, I'm just incredibly, I'm very aware of my privilege, um, as I think we've all become increasingly more aware, hopefully in the last couple of years, because we've had time perhaps to think more about it. Um, and I'm also just filled with gratitude. So uh, yeah, and it's just, you know, I've heard a lot of nice things from a lot of people that I love and that, and that mean a lot to me. And so uh, I'm just really grateful. The Bobcast is taking the rest of the month off for the holidays. But we'll be back in January for more coverage of Bates Winter Sports. Keep apprised of the latest and greatest Bates athletics news on the Bates Bobcats mobile app and at GoBatesBobcats.com. Talk to you in 2022 on the Bates Bobcast.